Seventh-day Adventists are one of a handful of Protestant denominations that believe Christians should rest on the seventh day like ancient Israel and the Jews do today. They base this belief on the Ten Commandments. In addition, they believe the seventh-day Sabbath is the only day God set aside as a special day of worship. They believe that honoring any other day is disobedience to God's command. If Adventists are correct, then why do Christians attend worship services on Sunday? Adventists teach that in AD 321, the Roman Emperor Constantine issued an edict declaring Sunday as the day of Christian worship, and that the Catholic Church caved to the Emperor's edict by shifting the sacred day from the seventh to the first day of the week. But did the Catholic Church really change the Sabbath day to Sunday? Is there really more to the story? We begin a new series that will be exploring the answers to those questions. We will start at the beginning from Genesis to Mount Sinai, to the life of Christ, to the Reformation, through the 17th century Sabbath wars, all the way to the end of the world. We will be telling the epic tale of this holy day. This is the story of the Sabbath. We begin the story of the Sabbath in video one by showing how Christ's life had parallels of imagery in each day of the creation week. We also presented a few theories by scholars who were trying to make sense of why in the Bible, at the end of creation week, God's rest disappeared for at least 25 centuries. In this video, we continue the story of the Sabbath by looking back to ancient Israel and discussing the theories of Israel's Sabbath calendar. Did Israel's Sabbath fall on the seventh day? of an endless cycle of seven days? Or did Israel look up to the phases of the moon to find out the Sabbath? This question is fundamental for Adventists. For if Israel looked up into the heavens for their calendar of weeks, months, and years, then very few today, including even the Jews themselves, are resting on the seventh day of the week in the way Israel did. What is your name, please? I am the Sabbath. I am the Sabbath. I am the Sabbath. Only one of these people is the real Sabbath. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. For almost 20 years, my wife and I have been interested in the idea that Israel kept a lunar Sabbath. By Lunar Sabbath, we mean that instead of keeping a weekly cycle of Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and so on endlessly, Israel looked up to the moon phases and kept a Sabbath on the dark moon, the waxing half moon, the full moon, and the waning half moon. The moon told Israel when the Sabbaths were, and man did not have to keep account of the days, independently from anything in the heavens. We have researched this topic as well as we think is possible. Besides reading books and articles from across a variety of perspectives, for several years we discussed this topic with a rabbi who had lived in Tel Aviv. We also asked questions of a scholar in Jerusalem. What we have encountered is that many scholars cite textual, historical, and archaeological evidence claiming with great certainty that their position on the Sabbath day is the correct one. But often these notable scholars disagree with each other. And what we have found is that there is no definitive answer. Different sources give opposite conclusions. You would think that there would be an authoritative source to get a definitive answer. But the fact is, no one really knows for certain. 
It's all speculation. Not even the Jews themselves seem to know. Adventists obviously join those who believe that the seventh day unbroken weekly cycle began at creation and continues to this day, and that the Sabbath falls on the last day of the week, irregardless of the lunar cycle. In the book entitled Lunar Sabbath Controversy, the author asks, are Sabbath keepers being deceived by Satan into observing a false Sabbath? Some Adventist ministers have been shocked to discover tens of thousands of Adventists have turned from keeping a Saturday Sabbath to observing a Sabbath based on the lunar phases of the month. Adventists who are fighting back against the lunar Sabbath theory claim Satan's final deception is attempting to draw specifically Seventh-day Adventists from the true Sabbath. If that is true, then this video is one of the most important videos Adventists or any other Seventh-day Sabbatarian can watch because we will be giving you some information that will help you decide. We encourage the Seventh-day Sabbatarians to do more research. And to get started, we have listed several sources at the end of this video. How would we tell the time if we couldn't see the sun, moon, or stars? Well, in our age, we would just look at a man-made object like a clock or phone. But what if the clock or the internet weren't available? There are only two ways to tell time. You can look up at the sky or look at an artificial measurement. But even the man-made timepieces were originally based on natural astronomical time. And when technology's calculations fail, the heavens are what we use to recalibrate our calendar. As much as we pretend we can keep time without God, we can't. The solar year is marked by the equinoxes and solstices, the months are decided by the new moon, and the day is marked by the sun. But the week is something different. There is nothing in the heavens that would mark a perfect seven-day week. That's why early man kept differing cycles during the month. Some early civilizations kept a three-day market week, others an eight or a ten-day week. However, eventually most cycles began to be based on the less than perfect phases of the moon. The four phases of the moon are a little more than seven days, and there are 29 or 30 days in a full lunar month. That doesn't work for those who want a perfect seven-day cycle of Sabbaths. That is why some people insist the week has been calculated independently of the heavenly mo movement for the people of God since creation week. It's the one calendar calculation not dependent upon any astronomical movement. If the flow of the days of our week were disrupted, how would we recalibrate it? Man decided to delineate the days by placing an imaginary line between Russia and Alaska. Everyone on one side is experiencing one day. Everyone on the other is experiencing a day before or after. Totally arbitrary. While one is having the Sabbath on one side, just a few steps away, they're not. Since man is now in charge of calculating the week, which day does it start? For centuries, Rome started its week on Saturday. Then later, Sunday took over as the beginning of the week. Today, the International Organization for Standardization, or the IOS, has Monday as the official beginning of the week. That would put Sunday as the seventh day of the week. Russia, Europe, India, and parts of Africa go by this week. Australia, New Zealand, and all of the Pacific Islands also begin their week on Mondays. So what do Adventists do when Sunday is the seventh day of your week? 
Muslims around the world consider Saturday as the beginning of the week. The Jews, China, America, Canada, Brazil, and most of South America begin their week on Sunday. So as you can see, the calendar is anything but simple. Let's go back now to the time of Israel in the Old Testament, and let's give some historical context to their calendar. What all scholars agree upon is that Israel always has gone by a lunar solar calendar. Once Israel arrived at the Promised Land, they looked at the moon to decide when the months began. Later, the Sanhedrin, Israel's high court, would have a quorum that would assemble in the courtyard on the 30th day of each month to observe the dark moon looking for the little sliver of light indicating when the new moon started. When that was spotted, the president of the Sanhedrin, in the presence of at least three members, called out, the new moon is consecrated, whereupon the whole assembly of people twice repeated the words, it is consecrated. The consecration of the new moon was vital for Israel because by it they would set the annual Sabbath festivals. The annual high Sabbaths, such as the Passover, Feast of the Unleavened Bread, Pentecost, the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, the Feast of the Tabernacles, completely depended upon the seasons, which is governed by the sun, moon, and stars. They also had the New Moon Festival, written about so often in association with the Sabbaths, both in the Old and New Testament. No one disputes Israel's calculations for the yearly and monthly feasts. But there is dispute about Israel's weeks. That observation of the new moon by the Sanhedrin continued till the 4th century, when because of the diaspora, everything changed. Rabbi Hillel II began the process of taking the Jewish calendar to a mathematical calculated year. Maimonides reported the modern Jewish calendars began in A.D. 1178 and the Jews no longer looked to the moon for their seasons or festivals. Christians didn't question Israel's weekly schedule for centuries. Then, in the 19th century, new archaeological discoveries reignited the lunar Sabbath debate among Protestants. In Babylonia, archaeologists unearthed ancient manuscripts that had words extremely similar to the Hebrew Shabbat, indicating they ceased from labor on the seventh day. Indeed, so similar were these Babylonian words, Shabbatum, to the Hebrew Shabbat, that they knew it was highly unlikely that they were not related. But the most intriguing thing to the historians was that the Babylonian word Shabbatum means specifically the 15th day of the moon or the full moon. Now, a few Protestants who considered Sunday the Christian Sabbath wondered if this ancient lunar day could dramatically impact the Lord's day. 
Seventh-day Adventists found themselves as one of the groups most affected by the Lunar Sabbath discovery. This put Adventists in a position that they would have to defend a Saturday Sabbath. The Lunar Sabbath put Saturday Sabbath on trial. Let's look at some of the evidences from both sides. One of the greatest objections to the Lunar Sabbath is that it is way too complex. An author on the Sabbath Truth website, affiliated with Amazing Facts, responded to the Lunar Sabbath advocates with this statement, quote, The Lunar Sabbath theory is not one that can be traced to a command or a simple statement. It is complex and is a sign that itself that there is something fishy about it. Close quote. Saturday Sabbath advocates point out that in the creation week, the moon wasn't created till the fourth day, placing the first Sabbath rest completely detached from the moon. Also, those who believe in a weekly cycle independent on anything in nature claim that the Jews have kept careful track of the calendar for millennia, and that is why they trust that the seventh day Sabbath is the correct one. Some Jewish scholars claim that the very independence of the weekly Sabbath itself is proof of God's claim on it. The Sabbath is, in a way, miraculous because it has been kept independently since the beginning. Since there are either 29 or 30 days to a lunar month, that forces one or two of the cycles during the month to have an extra day. That throws off the six days of work and then a Sabbath day cycle. Where do you put that extra day? The independent Sabbath can be kept simultaneously and in a strictly organized and scientific manner around the world without dependence on weather or even in places like the Earth's poles where the moon doesn't have normal cycles. This order is what God wants. Those who advocate for Saturday Sabbath point out that in only a handful of places in Scripture does the Sabbath fall on a lunar cycle, that most references to Sabbath do not include any reference to the moon. And there are several places in the Bible that specifically point out that the new moon, supposedly a lunar Sabbath, had people in Israel journeying or breaking the Sabbath in some way. This would indicate that the new moon couldn't be a rest day, throwing the entire model away. One of the strongest biblical arguments against the lunar Sabbath is that the appointed day of Pentecost occurs after seven weeks of seven, making the festival land on the 50th day. The Saturday Sabbath advocates claim this is the nail that seals the lunar Sabbath coffin. If a lunar week could have an extra day in it, then Pentecost could not occur on the 50th day because at least one of those weeks would have an extra day, possibly two. The fact that the Bible clearly states that seven weeks of seven equals 49 means the weeks are cyclical, unconnected with a lunar month. Now, we look at the evidence put forth by people who observe a lunar Sabbath. What is a lunar Sabbath? A lunar calendar has either 29 or 30 days in it. Each time a new month begins. The first day is called the new moon. For those who advocate for a lunar Sabbath, they claim that the Bible makes this 
and new moon festival and has a Sabbath-like rest in it, only not as restricted in the, what they can do on the Sabbath. The new moon day is not a part of the cycle of six days of labor and then a Sabbath. The new moon is an additional festival day or days each month and is separate from the rest of the cycles. Because this first day of the moon is always a festival day, that makes the Sabbaths always fall on the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th of every lunar month. Now, is there any evidence this type of calendar was kept by Israel in the Old Testament? And God said, let there be light in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. That is from Genesis 1, 14 and 15. The word that is important in that text is sacred times. And a lot of more common translations put it as seasons. Either way, the Hebrew word is moeda, meaning appointed times or sacred seasons, set feasts. And that word can even be connected to the tent of meetings. So this word translates seasons or appointed times is directly meaning that the sun, moon, and stars are to tell us religious times. So from the very beginning, God set up the sun, moon, and stars for our calendar, very specifically for our religious calendar. There's also a text in Psalm that restates this. Psalms 104, 19 says, You have made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows its time for setting. Now the word moeda is here also used as seasons, but specifically means religious or sacred times. Now, let's look at Moeda in light of the weekly Sabbath day. Does this Moeda or sacred times just mean annual Sabbaths? Or can it be directly linked to weekly Sabbaths? The Lunar Sabbath advocates point to Leviticus 23 showing that it is used the same word, moeda, that's translated the appointed festivals. And that will help bridge the gap between the Genesis text and the Sabbath. Let's read from the beginning. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, These are my appointed festivals. The appointed festivals of the Lord, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies, or moeda. There are six days when you may work, but the seventh day is the day of Sabbath rest, a day of sacred assembly. You are not to do any work wherever you live. It is the Sabbath of the Lord. So the Genesis account of the sun, moon, and stars are directly connected to the festivals and the weekly Sabbaths in Leviticus 23. Right here, God is connecting the weekly Sabbath to the creation of the sun, moon, and stars. If it's really that simple, many Adventists ask, why aren't the Jews keeping a lunar Sabbath today? Many Hebrew scholars believe that Israel kept a lunar Sabbath, at least till the time of the Babylonian captivity, and generally slowly evolved out of it. Some Jews claim it was well past the time of Christ into the fourth century when there was a sudden change from a lunar calendar to an independent calendar, no longer based on a human observation of the sun, moon, and stars. Some people scoff at the idea that the Hebrews across the map would universally accept such a calendar change. But Adventists can understand this because they claim that the 4th century Emperor Constantine suddenly changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday and everybody just went along. However, the Jews believe that the Sanhedrin has God's authority to change even the Sabbath. 
And so this hasn't been a problem with Jews from then till today. Many Hebrew scholars have known about the change, but it has never scandalized them like it has to many Protestants. The Universal Jewish Encyclopedia supports the idea that the that Israel's Sabbath was originally kept by a lunar phase schedule. Many early Jewish historians, such as Philo, agree. Christians in the first centuries backed them up, including Clement of Alexandria. Please take the time to read our sources at the end, where there is additional proofs. To refute the concern that this lunar calendar has either one or two extra new moon days, the Lunar Sabbath advocates point out that there is biblical or historical evidence for these two extra days. The Hebrew word for new moon is Rosh Chodesh. The first biblical evidence for a commanded new moon festival is found in Leviticus 23, 24, and 25 with the Feast of Trumpets on the first day of the seventh month. Please note how it is a type of Sabbath, but without the strictness and labor as the regular weekly Sabbath. Quote, on the first day of the seventh month, you are to have a day of Sabbath rest, a sacred assembly commemorated with trumpet blasts. Do no regular work, but present a food offering to the Lord. End quote. For at least the seventh month, Israel was to have a Rosh Chodesh Sabbath, a work week of six days, and then the eighth day of the month would be the seventh day after the six days of labor. Yes, that is confusing. The eighth day would be the seventh day Sabbath, thus pushing all Sabbaths off by one day for the rest of the month and pretty much forever. So. Would that throw off all the future Sabbaths by one day? Absolutely, if the seven-day cycle were constant. Is there any evidence of the two-day New Moon Festival? In the book Rest Days, it does report that the New Moon was occasionally celebrated for two days, and we can actually find support in this in Scripture. In 1 Samuel 20, we see Israel had a two-day celebration of the new moon. This is when David didn't show up to the two-day new moon festival with King Saul because he was afraid of being killed. Then we go to Ezekiel 46, verses 1 and 3. Quote, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, The gate of the inner court facing east is to be shut on the six working days. But on the Sabbath day and on the new moon, it is to be opened." End quote. Now, this clearly shows that the six days were separated from the Sabbath and that the new moon was separated from the Sabbaths too. And it was not considered a working day. It was its own day and different from the regular week. There are a lot more historical and biblical texts that advocate for the New Moon Festival unrelated to the rest of the week. We will put a few at the end of this video. We encourage you to read it and just decide for yourself if there is ample evidence for it. Earlier, we reported the concern from the Saturday Sabbath Keepers that the lunar calendar is just too complex to have been used. They believe God would have made it easy for Israel to keep the weekly Sabbath. The lunar Sabbath proponents respond that the lunar calendar is much more simple than the weekly Sabbath that is kept going by man's calculations. All one has to do is look at the moon. Our only addition is that Israel did rely on the starting of the new month by an official proclamation by the Sanhedrin. There is nothing like that today in Christian world, nor is there anything like that anymore in the Hebrew world. There is a blessing at the synagogue for the new month called Barak HaChodesh, but we could not find a reference for where there is an actual authoritative observational new moon ritual anymore. It is from a mathematical calculation. 
So if a Christian were to want to keep the lunar Sabbaths, there is no authoritative observational decision about when the new moon starts. Another reason the Lunar Sabbath advocates believe the lunar calendar would be more simple than the Saturday Sabbath calendar is that the Hebrew numbered both the days of the week and the days of the month. The days of the month were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way through 29 or 30. Instead of having a name for the weekdays, as we do today, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc., Israel also numbered the days of the week except for Sabbath. So, if one were to have a lunar Sabbath, there would be no conflict in the numbering because the Sabbath would always fall on day 8, 15, 22, or 29. But if the number of the week or month were cyclical, the day would be something like the third day of the 19th day. And that would be more confusing than a lunar dating of the Sabbaths. Now to briefly address Pentecost, which was the 50th day after seven weeks of seven. The Bible directly says the seven weeks of seven is 49 days. That splits up exactly seven days a week without a way of squeezing any extra new moon days. Those who believe in the lunar Sabbath believe that the one or two days that would be additional to the 49 days that led up to the Feast of Pentecost simply would not be counted. That doesn't sound much like an answer, but the lunar Sabbath advocates have a great deal more than what we can present here, so please take time to read their more thorough answers. like the Saturday Sabbath keepers, have the Pentecost that numbered the weeks making a lunar Sabbath seem impossible, the pro-lunar Sabbath advocates have a few texts that support them with numbers. For example, the seven days that Israel walked around Jericho. If the Sabbath were in an independent cycle of seven, one of those days would fall on a Sabbath, breaking the Sabbath commandment. If, however, they kept a lunar Sabbath and the count began on a new moon that didn't have the strict Sabbath requirements about rest, if they started on the new moon as day one, Israel could have walked around Jericho seven times without falling on a Sabbath. The book of Jasher, a non-canonical book mentioned in the Bible, records that ex that's exactly what happened. Jasher 88.14 records, And it was in the second month, on the first day of the month, that Yahweh said to Joshua, Rise up, behold, I have given Jericho into thy hand with all the people thereof, and all your fighting men shall go around the city once each day. Thus shall you do for six days. Close quote. There is one other Hebrew festival that resembles the Lunar Sabbath month. There is a festival with the new moon day outside of the 49 year cycle, and that is the Jubilee Sabbath every 50 years. In Leviticus 25, every seventh year Israel was commanded to let the soil rest. No sowing, no reaping. After seven sets of this sabbatical seventh year cycle, every 50th year there was to be the Jubilee Sabbath on the last seventh year cycle, there would be the seventh year rest. That would be the 49th year. Then the 50th Jubilee year rest would be immediately following. So two years of rest back to back, that would be mirroring the monthly Sabbath cycle where Israel would keep the last Sabbath of the month and a new moon festival right after. The final bit of evidence that we want to present is the Sabbath River, often called the Sabaton River, that is spoken about in the Talmud, Midrash, and by Josephus, Pliny, and several Muslim sources, including Arabian Nights. 
These rivers are reported to have run for six days and rested on the seventh. And other records say they fail to run but six days and only runs on the seventh. The Jews were known to have suggested using the river to know which day of the month is the Sabbath when away from Israel and without knowledge of when the Sanhedrin called the new moon. The Encyclopedia Britannica reports that these Sabbath rivers may not be mythical, but have been found in Lebanon, Media, Ethiopia, India, Euphrates, and near the Caspian Sea. We ask you, why would a river know when the Sabbath day was? Was it a miracle? Perhaps ancient Israel believed it to be, but we know today that the moon's lunar cycles affect the tides. That is another and quite intriguing bit of evidence for the early Israelites to celebrate their Sabbath rests according to the moon's four main phases. Okay. So now my wife, Teresa, is going to join us. Hi, everyone. Um, before we start, I just want to say I have a bad back. And so he's not hogging the chair. I literally can't sit in that chair. So we did find something me very comfy back here, but it just looks kind of funny. Tell you. Like, <laughs> since I've been st we've been studying this, is um, I found it amusing in our research um, that the Lunar Sabbath apologists use the exact same sermon about Saturday Sabbath keepers as the Adventists use about people who go to church on Sunday. They say that the independent cycle is a man-made calendar change by Rome. Of course, they mean pagan Rome. Um, it is a fulfillment of the changing of times um, that Daniel warned, warned us about in Scripture. I'm sorry, I don't mean to offend anyone, but any Adventist reading the Lunar Sabbath literature will see the irony in it. So the more you study history, the more you realize that the ancient Christians have grappled with the same theology we today think we discover. As King Solomon said, there is nothing new under the sun. Or under the moon. Or the moon. <laughs> right. Well, the fact is that neither the Saturday Sabbath theory nor the Lunar Sabbath theory can prove which God expected of Israel. Both have their merits and evidence, but both can't really defeat the other theory. Hebrew scholars teach that the Jews had three periods of deciding when the Sabbaths began. The earliest um, was when a visual, uh, only a visual observation of the Sabbath was based on the lunar cycles. And then the second period was the Talmudic period when Israel added a mathematical data to their observation. And the post-Talmudic uh, period was when the, in the fourth century, Rabbi Hillel II took them off the observational Sabbath completely and went purely to mathematical reckonings, you know, of the annual Sabbaths. And it is thought that at that time they began the independent Sabbath cycle that was unrelated to the moon. Well, we would like to point out here as we close this video that only a handful of people would be interested in this subject of Lunar Sabbath because the vast majority of Christians today believe that Christ gave us the Lord's Day because he chose to be resurrected on that day. The Lord's Day celebration is holy, not because it's Sabbath, but because Christ is holy. Right. Yet we made a video about the Lunar Sabbath because it is a historical part of the story of the Sabbath. And that is of extreme importance to the Seventh-day Adventists and many other Sabbatarians for that matter. Yeah, because if you believe, like Seventh-day Adventists, that God's last day test will be whether the people of God keep a correct Sabbath day, this question cannot be ignored or dismissed. And Sabbatarians are in a difficult position because at this point, there is no definitive answers nor an authoritative source that can settle the matter for us in the same way that the Jews had it settled by the Sanhedrin. And maybe I was thinking that's the whole point that God really didn't want us to uh, worry about right. when the Sabbath was celebrated on, right. once he came. Right, and you can look at it like this. The lost Ark of the Covenant perhaps 
That symbol, if found, would cause idolatry and obscure what the Ark of the Covenant really was, a prophecy of the coming Messiah. Perhaps the Sabbath was a prophetic shadow cast at the dawn of day. The shadow was so long that no one could see that which cast it. But as Israel took the gospel history forward, the shadow of the Sabbath grew shorter and shorter until Christ was seen as the one casting the shadow. The true Son of God as seen at the brightest part of the day. The shadow which had been the Sabbath disappeared because the Messianic prophecy had been fulfilled. Join us next time as we meet the first official rest days for Israel as we continue the story of the Sabbath. God bless each one of you. God bless you. Thank you for listening. So will the real Sabbath please stand up. Thank you.